Emmanuel Macron has become the first French president in two decades to win a second term. Projections at the close of voting showed Macron gaining over 58% of the vote to Marine Le Pen's 41%. That's much narrower than in 2017, when it was 66 to 34. Speaking to a crowd in front of the Eiffel Tower, Macron said the victory was for a more independent France and a stronger Europe. Nous impose de considérer toutes les difficultés. Mes chers compatriotes, c'est avec ambition et bienveillance pour notre pays, pour nous tous, que je veux pouvoir à vos côtés aborder les cinq années qui viennent. Cette ère nouvelle ne sera pas la continuité du quinquennat qui s'achève, mais l'invention collective d'une méthode refondée pour cinq années de mieux au service de notre pays. Je sais aussi que nombre de nos compatriotes ont voté ce jour pour moi, non pour soutenir les idées que je porte, mais pour faire barrage à celles de l'extrême droite. Et je veux ici les remercier et leur dire que j'ai conscience que ce vote mobilise pour les années à venir. Je suis dépositaire de leur sens du devoir, de leur attachement à la République et du respect des différences qui se sont exprimées ces dernières semaines. The far-right candidate conceded defeat in her third attempt to become president, but she bitterly criticised what she called the brutal and violent methods of Emmanuel Macron. Le Pen is vowing to fight on to secure a large number of representatives in legislative elections coming up in June. Je crains ce soir que le quinquennat qui s'ouvre ne rompra pas avec les pratiques méprisantes et brutales du précédent et qu'Emmanuel Macron ne fera rien pour réparer les fractures qui divisent notre pays et font souffrir nos compatriotes. Alors oui, pour éviter cet accaparement des pouvoirs par quelques-uns plus que jamais, Je poursuivrai mon engagement pour la France et les Français avec l'énergie, la persévérance et l'affection que vous me connaissez. Well, we can go live to Paris now and speak to our correspondent, Rosie Burchard, who's joining me uh, now. Rosie, what's top of Emmanuel Macron's intrigue after this, uh, after this victory? Well, the, the decision has been made, Ollie. Emmanuel Macron is keeping the keys to the Elysee Palace. I was there in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower last night here in Paris when his supporters spilled out. They were celebrating. They were jubilant. But of course, Ollie, that's just one side of the story. Many people here in France are disappointed, either disappointed with the choice they were presented with between Macron and far-right challenger Le Pen, or disappointed because they supported Marine Le Pen and she, of course, increased her vote share. So moving forward, the next big challenge for Emmanuel Macron will be trying to unite this very polarized and divided country. And the first test we'll have for that is those legislative elections coming up in a few weeks' time. Emmanuel Macron will be campaigning with his party, La République en Marche, or the Republic on the move, but so will his challenger, Marine Le Pen, and also those traditional parties that were simply decimated in the first round of these presidential elections. Now, if Macron does not succeed in securing a majority in that legislative house, or at least a workable, enough, enough seats to secure a workable coalition, he will not be able to advance with his uh, policy goals, most notably making good on promises to better tackle the climate crisis and his goal to reform France's labyrinthine pension system, which will be no easy feat. That is not a popular policy here, so a very difficult road ahead for Emmanuel Macron trying to unite this country, which is a country divided. And Rosie, what about a little bit further ahead? Because there's inevitably going to be speculation about who will contest the next election, given that Emmanuel Macron can't. Emmanuel Macron cannot. Marine Le Pen could, although uh, it seems now her having tried three times that she might give way for another member of her party. But of course, her, she having secured the largest ever vote share for her party, the National Rally, 
you can imagine that some those ideologies and those ideas that the party represents are not going away. Now, Macron so far does not seem to have trained up any successor, anyone within his government or his party that could be seen so far as a potential leader for France in the future. However, we have a couple of more years to come and that might be something high on his mind. But Oli, let's not forget that just five years ago, the first time Macron was elected, he was an entirely new kid on the block. He started a new party and swept into power. So that just gives you a sense of how quickly the landscape, the political landscape here in France can change. We might see entirely different parties and candidates coming in a few years' time. But of course, what we will likely not see is a total different change of those ideas that are represented. The far right having gained 41 to 42 percent of the votes in this round of the presidential elections and Macron's pro-business centrist party gaining 58 percent on his ticket for the presidential election. So a lot of uncertainty here and of course five years to go for Macron to try and prove himself and prove his party and his centrist ideology. And Rosie, what about the reaction from uh, Brussels, the European Union? Is it a huge sigh of relief that it's Macron and not Le Pen? Ollie, that sigh of relief was almost audible all the way from Brussels here in Paris. For the EU, a Le Pen presidency, some analysts suggest, would have simply been a death knell for the bloc. Le Pen is famous for her Eurosceptic views. She wanted to essentially tear up the treaties that write the, the, write the foundations of the European Union, despite the fact that she had softened her stance and uh, revoked what she would previously advocated for, which was France leaving the European Union. But in Brussels, we also have that other big institution, NATO, and France, of course, a key member of that defensive alliance amid a war in Ukraine. Now, Emmanuel Macron seems to have taken a bit of a step back from that diplomatic track over the last couple of weeks as he focuses his eyes on the domestic scene. But we do expect now he's going to make some sort of diplomatic comeback. We might, for example, see him appear in Kiev in the coming days. And most importantly, with that, with that war raging on, Ukraine has been calling for tougher EU sanctions on Moscow. This Macron victory might just be the key to unlocking some, some of that deadlock within the European Union on how to proceed on sanctions, most notably on whether to introduce an embargo on Russian oil. The EU countries continue to buy, many of them, energy from Russia on a daily basis. And Ukraine says they are simply then helping Russia finance that war. Okay, Rosie, merci. That's Rosie Burchard reporting live from Paris.